So with uh, with with your margin already offset, the the next step is really kind of to set up where your text is going to go and everything like that. But real quick, I'm looking at the size of this, and once you take off uh, a half inch on either side, what you're left with is seven and a half inches. So I'm just going to jump real quick back over to my other file. Oh, that's right, it's right up here. So I can, I'm going to jump back over to my other file and just make sure that I have that much on my sheet. And I do. So if I type in DI, I can actually just go from here to here and see that it's about an inch on either side. So I'll be good to go. I can fit it in that, that title block. So um, I'll jump back into the title block file. I know that I set up a border layer, so I'm going to transition this to the border layer. And to do that, you just select the rectangle, and then you just switch the pull down to whatever layer you want to put it on. And then from here, we're just establishing the actual uh, text layout. So I'm going to keep it uh, rather simple, and I'm not going to overload you with setting up like an entire title block with name and address and date and who drew it and all this other stuff. I just want essentially um, two things. Well, three things. I want to know the sheet number. I want to know um, what the sheet is called. And I want to know um, your name and the class. So uh, that's going to look like this. The format is going to follow. Um, I'm going to activate the border layer. And I'm going to start off by drawing a line. So I hit L, Enter, and it activates the line command. So I'm going to hover over the corner and pull it off. And I'm going to give myself, I guess I'll do one and a quarter inches, so 1.25. And uh, here's something to be aware of. Your object snap, if you have perpendicular on, it'll show you that. Let me pull it up for you. It'll show you this little green perpendicular symbol. If you don't have it turned on, you might be able to get uh, intersect would probably work. Or you can hover over this and then pull back and it should give you intersect as well. But perpendicular was, is, is taking precedence for me. Okay, so that's one and a quarter. I want my uh, number to be in the bottom right hand corner in a square. So I'm gonna uh, put a line that's one and a quarter up from the bottom here. So I hover, grab the endpoint and move up 1.25 and then go to perpendicular. And then I'm gonna create just one more line and I'm gonna go from midpoint here all the way up to the top right there. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is create one more line because if I'm going to put my sheet number down here and I'm going to put my sheet title here and our names are going to go right here, I want to put the class number right here. So uh, one more line here. Hover over that and pull it down one and a half inches and finish it off like that. So I... I it kind of looks hard to see up there, so I'm going to change this color to something you're going to see a little better. There we go. You guys can see that pretty well? So uh, if you're catching up, this is one and a quarter wide. The box is one and a quarter tall. I snapped to the midpoint here and drew it all the way up. And then I went one and a half inches down here. So um, pretty simple stuff. It's all just lines right now. I'm going to pause the video because this is still very short. Um, and 
Then we're going to, um, I'll make sure you're all caught up to this, and then we're going to move into transitioning it back into the other file. All right. Um, after you get to a point where you've built your title block, um, the, at least the border lines, we need to set it up to receive the information that we're going to put in it. Um, namely, I know that every single one of us here in this class, we are in the ARC 121 class. That information that I am planning for this block is not going to change. So uh, that means that I can actually just build it into the title block. So if anything were to happen and perhaps this class number changed to 124, then for all of the drawings that I ever did in this class, I go to my title block and I change it to 124 once and it automatically updates in the rest of the files. So that's why I do that here instead of on my actual title block on the drawing itself. So um, I want to, and the reason I brought in this line layer, I want to just kind of line things up using a certain <coughs> um, alignment. So I'm going to draw a line. And for me, I'm just going to uh, hover off the edge here and go one eighth of an inch. Or um, that's right, it's let's switch to architectural. OK, it'll be easier rather than dealing with like the uh, decimal values for fractions. It's annoying. So I'm going to switch it over to architectural real fast. And I'm going to going to uh, start the line command again. And now I'm going to uh, hover over from the side one eighth of an inch. And I start my line there. So that's one eighth of an inch off of the rightmost borderline. And that's because I'm going to uh, draw a line across here like this. And now that line is the line that I'm going to align all of my text to at the bottom. So my text is going to just kind of drop horizontally onto that line. I'll show you how to do that when we get there. But um, one eighth of an inch, yeah. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the field that's just left of it. And all you have to do is just copy from the base point that is the rightmost point. So I uh, activate the copy command with CO. And I hit Enter. And then I click and click. So notice I didn't actually grab the line itself. I just grabbed the reference point that I wanted to match from the space to its right. Does that make sense? Sure, yeah. So if, if I know that I want exactly the same instance, but I don't feel like doing the t you know hovering and typing in 1 8, all I do is grab the, the line that I want, activate the copy command, and I go from the base point that I know I want it to be referential to. So I click here, and I move it over to the other side right there. Are there any questions? OK, so there's one more thing then, one more small thing that I want to get into this video before we uh, switch in and, and start to work on our actual drawing. And that's that static text. So I'm going to um, just real quick switch over to my text layer. And this is going to be your first introduction to the text features. And I'm going to say right now that there are a lot of settings. We're going to keep it simple. Um, let me just real quick see what kind of text we have. Standard 316. Okay. All right. Well, so rather than trying to uh, actually modify the text style yet, I'm just going to drop in whatever text the default is. I hope it's not the uh, line text. We'll see. Anyway, so the text uh, is actually found under the annotation tab, which is uh, right up here. So, 
Hold on a second. All right. So um, where was I? Text. Yes. All right. Text. Annotation tab. It, it's right here uh, under the home, home tab annotation panel. Um, this little button right here for text. You'll notice that when you click the arrow below, it has a setting for multi-line text and a setting for single line text. Um, multi-line text works a little bit more like closer to a word processor, I guess, where you can kind of shrink it and the text will actually, uh, you know, jump down lines below like it's indenting. Um, the single line text is just going to go on forever as a straight string of text. Um, so this is what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to stick to uh, single line text for now. And this is essentially how it works. When you click in the space, you draw a line. Oh no, this is for this, the height, sorry. Yeah, start point of text. Yeah, that's fine. So you click in the space, this is weird. It's functioning differently than I recall. Um, 3 16 is probably fine, I think. I don't recall what the sizes I made were. But uh, 3 16 will just hit enter. And the rotation is important because the rotation should be zero. Uh, well, actually, no. I'm sorry. It should be 90. We're gonna draw. We're gonna draw the line upward at this point, and uh, that's going to say I'm, my my text is essentially gonna be vertical. And then it does that. It's you can't really see it very well in the projector, but it's essentially just a cursor, like a word processor. And uh, another quick general note for all of you, architectural drawings are all done in caps. Caps lock, put it on, and type A-R-C-H-121. And you can hit enter or you can uh, hit escape and it should just drop it in like this. So now that becomes an object, a selectable object that you can click. And then you have this nifty little blue grip on it. And you can grab the grip and move it down here to the title block. Are you, what are you, I'll have to, I'll have to look at it because that sounds like it's 2015 that you're working in. I'll, I'll check it out. So, I'll take a look at it. So, um, anyway, so I grabbed the grip and I dropped it right here and I'm just centerizing it now to get it to look right. So I can grab the grip again and I can slide it a little bit off, put it about there. And that's good to go for me right now. We'll go over more in depth, you know, like text alignments and stuff, but I won't give you everything all at once because it's going to be a bit too much to recall. So we'll kind of do it step by step as we roll it out. So this is, uh, I'll get to your question in a second. This is uh, the overall title block that we're going to link in. So, um, We'll get you to this point, and then we're going to uh, go and go through the process of actually creating an X reference file. So, what questions do you have? Um, I just wanted to ask where you're going to be inserting the text. The text line. Yeah, because the height I did three sixteenths of an inch. Yeah. The line I did it vertical because I wanted my text to go vertical. Okay distance doesn't matter at that point, it's just an angle. Okay. 